No Rest for the Weekend's coverage of the Tribeca Film Festival is sponsored by Black Magic Design, the world's highest quality products for the feature film, post and broadcast industries. Blackmagicdesign.com Eric McLennan here with No Rest for the Weekend. I'm joined by director Xu Yang of the film Some Rain Must Fall, which is making its debut here at the 23rd Annual Tribeca Festival here in beautiful New York City. Thank you for joining me today. So this is, this is your first time attending the, the Tribeca Film Festival in New York City, is yeah. that correct? And how has your experience been thus far? Uh, it was wonderful. I, I've, uh, I've been to New York uh, City a couple of times before, and uh, this is the first time I actually uh, had a feature to invite it to the, the festival. And uh, it was premiered yesterday, and it was uh, it was really nice screening and uh, really nice cinema. And um, and I did a really uh, good Q&A with the, the artist director. Um, yeah, and uh, I just took my time and I really explored the city, and I really loved it. So. Uh, how, how do you feel audience reception of the film was? It was nice. I think it was. Uh, it was. Uh, I mean. I mean. It's. It's. It's sort of like an international film, like foreign language filming, a, a very you know American film festival, and it was really better than I, I thought. And everybody was really warm and asked a lot of questions. And uh, yeah, I was so happy. Now the main character of the film. I don't want to butcher her name. Uh, Tai. Tai. Yeah. Tai spends a lot of the film pushing herself to feel, pushing uh, herself to experience other things and to feel something different in, in, in a, an increasingly claustrophobic life that, that she's insulated herself in. It's amazing because the film is set in China and they have, uh, you have sociologically a collectivist attitude towards family, whereas America is very individualist. But Tai, it seems, is rather insulated. You know, she's not connecting with her da daughter. She's drifting apart from her parents. Where did that story originate in you as you were writing this? I think I think a, a couple of different places. I, I think one thing um, has a lot to do with my own upbringing, uh, the relationship I had with my my mother. And uh, I used to have a quite uh, difficult relationship with with my mother when I was uh, growing up because I was like you know a rebel. She, she's my mo mother when I was growing up, going to school. You don't really spend you don't really spend too much time with her. You you see her you see her you know during the morning before you go to school. Then you come back after school. You have dinner with her. Then you go to do homework. And you don't really spend. I mean, at least in China, like you don't get to spend time too much time with your family. But then I was having a bad relationship with her. So like sort of almost I hated her in a way. Like oh you know it was like really strong feeling. But after I, then I went to after high school I went to study in Australia mm -hmm. so I spent five, I lived in Australia for five years and then after I graduated I was 25 I think and I returned to China and I didn't go to any other big city I'm from a smaller city called Changzhou so I didn't go to any other big city like Beijing or Shanghai as most of my peers do especially you want to work in film right. and uh, I, I mean, I decided early on that I want to do independent film, so I'm able to do it anywhere. So I was like, I'm going to stay in my hometown, Changzhou. So I lived, I, I went back to live with my parents, but it became a very strange thing as um, when I am, when I was at 25, I get to spend 24 hours, you know, you, you're a freelancer, you work at home and you, I really do like it. I start spending time with her every day. My dad still works and she doesn't work. So like then I really got to sort of uh, witness or, or, or ob observe, observe what does she do every day? Because like as a full-time housewife, nobody knows what, what do they do every day. It's, it's actually an intense full-time job. It's a lonely full-time job to taking care of other people. So then I start slowly witnessing things start trying to understand her and start you know she also start open um, open herself to me telling me secrets in her life or regrets she's mean or the problem that she encounters every day what are the things that driv is driving her crazy and um, so so there are a lot of things that i witnessed i heard and those things i i mean i i, I don't i don't necessarily understand what do they mean but they are the things that really stay with me the things happened to her and uh, w within my family and when i was writing this script i was i just had, i created this kind of the, the character i i, I later realized maybe it's sort of more of you know on my mother from my mother and then all those things just when i was writing it all those things just kind of pouring out to the page 
I think that's one of the reasons, and also at the time when I was um, sort of researching or, or like you know trying to find inspiration for the for the film, I was reading a lot of, uh, Alice Munro, mm -hmm. and she writes a lot of women, and especially uh, um, you know in middle age full time housewife, and she's probably one of the biggest inspiration for 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 this story as well for the character I suppose, and I mean she write and and it's crazy. I mean she writes. You know stories of women that's from 50s, 60s, like pre uh, uh, se uh, sexual revelation, and at that time, I felt that sort of similarity of 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 the woman. I mean, uh, Alice Munro uh, explains that the the women that she writes is the same. They they were taught, you know, uh, um, um, get get a family, uh, uh, you know, being a wife and ha being a mother, have a kid. That's all life is about. That's what women should be, you know, doing. And uh, Alice Munro said. They actually believed it, but until they they had them, they had a husband, they had a child, and they suddenly realized when they're 40 years old, they suddenly realized, oh, life should be more. Life shouldn't just be about this. You know what you saw in the film is probably Thai's way to trying to escape and trying to you know find more meaning. Of yeah, life. find another layer to herself other than what she's been told yes, that she yes, is to be. Yes, yes, yes. The way you shot the film. There's a lot of, you, you see things through doorways, you see things around corners. It's very voyeuristic. Could you imagine writing a story like this and allowing someone else to direct it? Sure, why not? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm new director, it's, it's my first film. I would love to try anything. Like if, if anybody wants to ask me to write a script and if the idea really interests me and if it's something I would um, love to explore, I'm happy to write for other people. Or if I, I wrote a script and I was like, oh, I'm not going to do it, but there is, is a friend director who I believe it's a perfect fit, I sh why not? Okay, the correct answer was no, because you masterfully directed this picture. Okay. I love it so much. Um, it's getting compared to, to Parasite in, in, its, in its depictions of class struggles, but I found it more to be about Ty's personal struggles. How, what is your view of it? No, I, I agree with you. I think, I think it's, 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 it's really about her. It's a, this is the film, so to me, there's, I mean, I would say, I mean, I don't know if it's too much, but I would say there's actually no story. I mean not in the traditional like sense as a plot right so it's not plot driven drama to me it's a character driven drama it's all about discovery of or witnessing the discovery of herself in a way so yes it's it's about her um, um, self struggling it's about her self discovery as we said and uh, and we are for me the, the the perspective of the camera is almost as the audience we are observing her we are you almost felt like those, we, we, we intentionally kept a sort of a distance between the camera and the character. So right. it felt like... We like still had a visual it. invasiveness. So, exactly. Yeah, we were seeing things we weren't supposed to see. It's like we're peeping Tom, so we're seeing yes. things, we're seeing the struggle that she's going through in life. So in a way, the, we are seeing different sides of her, but never really the full view. But I, I believe that real human being in real life, I... I you would never get to understand a human being fully. Right. You just see different sides of a human being. Even friends we, you know, uh, known for many years. Even our families. Do you re Do you actually fully know who your mother is? I I wouldn't say yes. Yeah, we can only yeah. assemble the edits we have. Yes, yeah, I think is yes, uh, yes, yes, a great point to uh, stop on. Unless there's anything else you'd like to share about Sun Rain Must Fall, or your work. I mean. Yeah, yeah, if you have a chance to watch the film, it's uh, it's uh, it's not a it's not a typical um, uh, um, um, I, I say typical story. It's a lot of openness to the film, and uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> if you like this type of film, then watch it. Yeah. I did, I did, a, I liked okay. it a lot. So uh, again, no rest for the weekend. Shui Yang for some rain must fall here at Tribeca. Thank you so much. You. I really appreciate it. Thank this. you, sir. Thank you. This is the BTRP Media Network.